So, you want to play Auto Legends. You want to understand the game from the inside and out. That's a really dumb way to say that. You just want to take part in some of the tournaments on the Discord. You want to play and hang out with friends at car meets. Well, let's get into Auto Legends 101. I feel like it's about time I start a series in a very similar fashion to when I did the CSR 3 series. Let's get started. Let's explain Auto Legends first off. So when you first start up the game in alpha testing right now, you start with this RX-7. The perfect RX-7 to start with in Garage is 222 HP, 187 torque, 2826 pounds. I'm 1 HP below, it's fine. 1 torque below, it's fine. You'll still be com plenty competitive. Now, cars look great in this game. Like Even the interiors look great. The first thing you want to do as soon as you open your account is click this little plus sign. Every eight hours, you can click that little plus sign. And it'll give you, I love how I'm doing hand gestures and you can't see me. Every time you click that plus sign, it gives you 1,000 gold and 100,000 cash. Now, if you want to learn the tutorial and the controls, you can do that here. Uh, I'll go through that here in a second. But you want to set your username. Oh, it doesn't let you set your user. There we go. Whoa, if you click it fast, it breaks. I broke it. Hold on. All right, I'm back. Let's just do the tutorial first before clicking the little man in the circle. So let's go to the tutorial. This teaches you how to race. Now there are, are I just had a stroke. There are multiple ways to drive the vehicle in this game. If you are on a laptop with a touchpad, you can use scrolling for the throttle control. You can also use the scroll wheel on a mouse. You can also click and drag like the old Nitto 1320 games. You can change camera angles with C. You can also hold alt when you're facing an opponent and it'll look at the opponent and you can rev to a certain RPM to launch. Now tutorial will auto launch and you want to shift in the green and it will stop you. There are several different keys you can use for this. You can use shift, you can use the up arrow or you can use W. I prefer to use W just cause left hand you know, placement on the keyboard. I grew up playing Halo. I want to use my WASD. So that's our first run. Now it's going to give us a second tutorial about using nitrous. These are very basic at the moment. Remember, this is in alpha stages. The point of us playing it in alpha is to show off that we like it and give feedback through the Discord or through Facebook or wherever. But Discord is definitely the best place to do it. So Start up the next race. Let's go. This will basically be how to use nitrous, which is a great little tutorial because some people don't realize that it's there. And like I said, there's different keys for it. You can use either D, Z, or the right arrow. Those are your keys for it. Now, one thing that's really cool about this game that it'll eventually have is nitrous purge. So you can actually like you know, show off on your way up to, so we're going to wait, and now it'll tell us to use nitrous, so D, right arrow, or Z. I use D because I shift with W. It would be a little bit weird if I shifted with W and hit the arrow key for the right. <laughs> no, but that's your best way to shift and get into the game overall. So it's only a 50 shot on this car, so it doesn't seem like it does a lot. But that's generally how you play the game. That's it. At least for, you know, basic controls. Now, you can scroll around the car with holding your left click in garage and just kind of going in circles. You can also go up and down, which is really nice. And now we can set our player tag. So what I want, X, X, A, L. I'm going to hit done. Now, this is a really cool player profile card. It tells you your reaction time average, your win rate, your quarter mile average, your pink slips one. It shows your favorite car. There's a bunch of other stuff they're going to do as well. And if you want to change your profile photo, I think later on they're going to allow having your own. But there's a whole bunch of them here you can kind of pick. I like going with this guy. So we're going to hit back. And here we are in the garage looking at this wonderful car. And can I say that the graphics on this game are amazing? So let's get to know the world map. The world map right now is very basic. Expect it to probably change before release. 
But as you can see, we have the exotic import. We have the memory lane classics. These are going to be two car lots that probably house things like obviously classic muscle cars. And this will probably be exotic imports like McLarens and Zondas and anything else that you've kind of seen throughout the website for cars we've kind of spotted in the advertising. From here, you have 6th Street Bridge, which is a real world location. You have Fast Eddies, which is just your general car lot. Speed Lab is where you go to edit and build your car, visuals and engine. And then the Hangers is an actual proper drag strip, basically. And Home is exactly where we just were. We were at home looking at our RX-7. So I want to do a little bit to my car before we go and try to race. So we're going to max out my RX-7 because I think that's a fun idea right now. And that's kind of what I want to do, at least for the moment. So we're going to load up the scene. And remember, if this is the first time you're loading up the game, it has to kind of cache all the assets on your computer or eventually when it's on mobile on your phone. So it's going to take a moment to load everything like Speed Lab and stuff like that your first couple times of playing the game. So first off, I'm going to do performance. The thing that I like to do is build everything up before I throw the turbo on. So I just like to figure out, you know, what are the best parts? So we're going to go seven. This one. Now you don't always want to go with the best part because sometimes you can see it adds weight as well. So maybe it adds too much weight and you want to go down one. Fuel system. I'll leave that stock. We're not going to supercharge today. We're going to go with cooling here. One is the least amount of weight gain. I might leave radiator alone. Exhaust. Uh, five pounds, that's fine. Seven pounds? Five pounds. I'm going with that one. And then we're going to go look at catalytic converters. They're all four pounds. Now, if you actually look over here at the RX-7, you know, this is your cart preview over here on the far right, bottom right. This is what your cart actually costs. So we're going to continue building here. ECU, ignition stuff. I like to click everything just because. We're going to add that 100 shot of nitrous. This stuff all adds weight, so I never put it on. Clutch, you kind of you kind of want it because it makes your shifts faster, but it is pretty heavy. Actually, I want this one. Flywheel, same idea. And you'll notice that this is kind of like a general suggestion of what it adds, but it might actually add more. So, like, watch my horsepower. It says 33, 26, 37 with the drive shaft. If I add it, okay. It did, it actually removed torque. No, it didn't. Never mind. So, differential, same idea. Transmission, you always want the top transmission, the 4200 one. And I'll show you how to get out of this thing in a little bit here. But you want to click your 4200, add that to cart. Now you can edit your gear ratios. Supposedly, the best tires are actually the radial slicks. So add those. And then you want to look at your weight loss. You want to do weight reduction, 75 pounds. Check out, confirm. This game does have install timers. At least for the beta, though, or the alpha here, you can just bypass them very easily because, like I said, click your little plus sign and you'll be fine. So now we're up to 252. We didn't gain much power. Let's add that turbocharger, intercooler. I think I'm going to leave stock. And then diverter valve doesn't seem to do anything yet, but I'm still going to add one for the lulzies. And there we go. So that's about the best way to build up your RX-7. Now, 473 HP. Why does that feel really low? It should be like 530. wonder if I do need an inner. Huh. It should be way higher than that. Interesting. Oh, I missed all the rotary internals. <laughs> yeah, I missed a whole bunch of parts. So you want to actually do your engine internals too, probably. You know, that's probably a good idea. We're going to do this one. Let's do our engine internals here. Some parts might actually remove horsepower, which is okay because not every part is compatible with every build. 
So like you can see this one removes power, but this one adds a ton. So since I forgot a bunch of stuff, let's build it. Get this all on there and we're good to go. 531, there we go. That's the perfect HP as far as I know. Now you wanna make your car stand out in the crowd. Let's go to visual tuning. There's a bunch of body kits you can uh, purchase that are full size, just full wide bodies. There's the Pandem kit, the Pandem boss wide body, which looks sick. There's the Rocket Bunny, I believe. Pandem Rocket Bunny wide body. The just random aftermarket kit. And a feed wide body. I've never heard of feed. Or... You can just customize and build kind of your own body kit. So I'm going to do that. None of this stuff really affects anything. There's rear bumper. That basically just debadges it. It doesn't really do anything. Side skirts. I'll add them. Diffusers. There's so many diffusers. I don't like going crazy with my diffusers, so I'll go with something like this. Hood. We want... It's like a Dodge Viper hood. I like this one for some reason. I don't know why. Mirrors, you can get smaller mirrors. The rear windshield, you can get these things. Window louvers. Front splitter. We'll add that on there. Why not? A trunk. Uh, there's no difference in the trunks right now. It's just a visual glitch. Not a big deal. And now you can do a bunch of spoilers. And at least right now, I don't think these actually affect your race drag. But I'm still going to do something like a rear lip because I prefer the lips over the other stuff. Exhaust tip. We're going to do the big cannon boy. Headlights. There's a whole bunch of different ones. That one's like an air intake headlight. These guys. And then there's these. I really like these ones. Tail lights. It's hard to tell the difference between them here in the speed shop. So you can kind of have to shop blind for the moment, but I gave them the idea of basically turning them on. Some Graham lights. Now, I like doing works on front and rear just because these are my favorite wheels that are currently in the game. So we're going to confirm and build, and we're going to bypass the uh, timers here. So now we have an awesome-looking car. Now we want to tune it. So... There's gear ratio tuning and there's stance tuning. Now, what is stance? If you haven't heard that term before, I'm kind of surprised. Stance is basically where you can control ride height. You can control tire sizing. There's a glitch currently. This will not be a thing forever. Where if you put your rear wheel drive cars up at maximum drive height of 14, you will actually be faster. Now, other than that, I like to usually do a spacer. I like to do rim width. To maximum, I like to do a diameter of 17. Tire stretch, just put it at the zero. And sidewall, I like doing about like 45-ish. And then on the front, since this is rear wheel drive, I like to get rid of, or not get rid of the sidewall, but like put it to the same. I leave the stretch. I like to do that, which actually disables... Uh, one of these. I forget which one. I'm going to put that to zero. Width, we're going to do biggest because I think it's funny. We'll space it out. Oh, it's a little glitched and does not like when you do that, but that's okay. And then you can actually even do camber in this game, which is pretty cool, but not something I'm going to do. Oh, wow. I wonder if it's... Yeah, eh, it's okay. It's beta. What do you expect? So <laughs> we're going to make it kind of a jokey car. And then gearing. I like to just put my gearing up to like 4.75. I don't really touch anything else, at least for the moment. And then there's actually a test track here in the speed lab. So you can just go straight to test drive. You can also repaint your car. You can put it on the dyno. But we can go straight to test driving right now. So let's start to finish this little bit of a video here where now we are going to test drive my maxed out RX-7. At least I think I maxed it out. Obviously, I didn't use a build guide for this. I just kind of went off of intuition and just reading the numbers. But bigger number does not always mean good. So remember that. But as you can see, we can nitrous purge, which is pretty cool. 
I don't think it uses any of your actual nitrous. But for right now, I'm going to rev out to about here. And you want to shift almost immediately, at least with the way I did my gear ratios. And <clears throat> there we go. 10.08. So I'm a little bit slow compared to everybody else. 9.84. There are people on this game right now doing 9.5s in the RX-7. I don't get it. Let me show you a little trick, though, that it will help you get closer to those 9.5s. So what you want to do is you want to go to your drivetrain. You want to go all the way over to transmissions. Now you see that these transmissions all add a ton of weight. Go back to stock. Same with differential. You want to go back to whatever the stock one was because it doesn't add any horsepower. There we go. And then just check out. Speed it up and you're done. Now this car should be properly quick. So let's go double check it again on the racetrack and see if it is actually as fast as it possibly can be. Nitrous in the public alpha does not work yet. So hitting it is more of just a visual thing, but it will work in future versions of the game. Um, on a private build of the game, we tested it on Friday. Nitrous does work in the private version. So in alpha three or beta, if they decide to launch an alpha three, I don't know. Um, nitrous will be fixed. So here we are. We want to rev probably almost 8K and launch. And then I like to use my nitrous like third gear and I like to shift at about 8K. So the green and yellow areas are more of a guide for shifting than anything else. You don't necessarily, wow, that's a good RT. You don't necessarily need to shift in the perfect RPM spot. It doesn't really matter as much. So take it with a grain of salt. It's a suggestion, not a perfect spot. I hope eventually they let us actually move where it is because that could be your shift light, which is pretty awesome. So anyway, let's go back and we'll check out one of the race locations. For me, I'm going to the hangars because this is my favorite place to race because it has the burnouts. Um, it has just a really cool scenery all around it. And just overall, I think it's my favorite area of the game. So it's loading up the scene right now. It needs to load a bunch of the other car models. Cause like I said, this is the first time I've launched the public alpha two. So I'm actually a little bit slow on my loading screens, but that's okay. It's going to be that way because that's just how it is. I don't know. So you can pick your own parking spot if you want, or you can do a random spot. It looks like it wasn't actually giving me the buttons, but you can walk around using WASD, which is pretty cool. You can also use the arrows. There's an in-game chat here. But you can overall just walk around, look at everybody's car, kind of see everything. And it's overall, it's a really cool area. You can also use the scroll wheel to move. So scrolling up pushes you backwards, scrolling down makes you go forward. A lot of these are just AIs, which, you know, whatever. But you can click on a car. You can click to zoom into it, and you can scroll around it, which is pretty cool. Click the exit button to get out. There is a leaderboard for now. I think this is only street credit based. But it's whoever has basically won the most races. So let's challenge. Now, since this is an AI, I can only do up to 5K. I can do... Private challenge, which is basically race immediately. I can do a public challenge, which puts me in the queue, and then I can go watch live races uh, until it's my turn. And then other people will also watch my race with this. I'm going to do private just because it's immediate. So here we are getting into our first full race. Yes, we know the lighting is a little bit off here, but that'll change in the future, I promise. So we're basically lining up. Amber should be better than me, but this car is not built. I'm built. <laughs> I'm built like a walrus. I don't know. <laughs> walrus? They aren't even light. So it's finding the match. It's searching. It's getting all the information for the race. They do want to speed up these loading screens drastically if they can. There's just a lot of data that's sent back and forth from the server to the game and the game to the server. So some of the loading screen stuff is also going to be very dependent on your own internet. So here we are 
burnout scene. I love the burnout. It very much reminds me of Need for Speed Pro Street. I cannot do a burnout while talking. Oh my god. There we go, max grip. I'm gonna hit the purge a little bit. You can change the video camera so it looks like this, or you can hold alt and it looks at the uh other racer. I fouled. That's okay. As you can see, I can look back. He's way back there. Hit C and I'm in front. And a 9.67. Holy cow. Maybe this thing is fine. <clears throat> I didn't even really try. What was my quarter mile here? My quarter mile was... 9.78. So, that's why it was 9.7. Got it. But as you can see, you can also collapse and expand your thing here. So like RT, obviously he had a the CPU had a 1.3, 60 foot of a 2.379, 30, 30 foot. Very similar to what you would see on an actual drag slip ticket if you were at the racetrack. There are also these little emojis you see at the bottom right corner. They associate with the one, two, three on your keyboard. And you can kind of click through them, and it actually goes to the other person, which is pretty cool. So you can click continue. tells me how much street credit I lost. Continue. And you're on your way. So let's go to the other racetrack real quick. We'll go to 6th Street so I can give you the idea behind it. Eventually. I'm going to pause until we get there. Here we are, back to parking, but it's not giving me the buttons. That's okay. So just click random. So, as you can see, here we are on 6th Street. So, what is this place? Well, this is a real-world location. 6th Street Bridge is a very well-known spot for being kind of where takeover events sort of started, I guess, is at least what I was told. As you can see, there's all these different cars here. Campos won a race recently, so let's take that away from do a private challenge. And the little crown just means, like, won their previous race or something along those lines. But here we are, lining up with another RX-7. I'm probably going to kick its butt, as long as I don't foul. Since I don't have sound on because I'm recording, I can't hear the beeps, and I do a lot of my racing. That, I have never heard a train horn by my house. Well, I have, but it's very infrequent, and I don't know if my mic picked that up. I have my windows open. But it's very likely that I'm just going to win this race. So I don't know. I didn't know what I was saying there. The other thing about 6th Street is it doesn't have burnouts. You just line up and go, which is pretty cool. So like I said, I'm going to rev to about here. And there you go. And I'm gone. So I hope I didn't foul. But since I don't have sound on, I have no idea if I fouled, I have no idea what the timers are on the lights because I do it by sound. The beep, beep, beep. Wow, my voice cracked. Am I 12? Okay, I got my 5K back. Sorry about destroying you. But as you can see, oh, I had a ter uh, not a bad RT. Yeah, I'm running like nine sevens, which is pretty good. But anyway, I'm going to continue. Won some street credit. And the only other things I really need to show you guys at this point is like fast eddies. So I'm going to show you guys the car buying process real quick if you wanted to buy a different car, and we'll go from there. So we're going to go back to the map, which doesn't take that long. And we're going to go to Fast Eddies. Now, Fast Eddies might be the slowest loading scene, I think, because of the number of cars. And I think they are working on this. We aren't sure exactly what they're going to change about it, but they are working on it, and they're trying to think of a better way to do this. So... I think Fast Eddies is awesome. I like walking around it, but generally I'll show you how I browse the cars because I think it's a little bit better. So just click. You can walk around with WASD or the arrow keys or your mouse. Or if you're on a touchscreen computer, you can even scroll. Or you can just view inventory and you can search alphabetically. So yeah, there's a couple assets missing. Just a visual issue. Not a big deal. But you can scroll through and just see kind of what you want. But right now, let's say I just want to look at the Civic. Let's see which one's faster. This one has 83, 84. Now, why is there a discrepancy in reported horsepower and reported torque? 
So this goes back to what I was saying in the garage with the perfect RX-7. They're trying to emulate real life where if you buy two identical cars off of a car lot and take them to a dyno, they are going to have different horsepowers. They're going to have different weights. They're going to have different everything, kind of. So, you know, if I took two Honda Civic DXs that are brand new off the lot, both of them only have eight miles on them, take them to a dyno and run a dyno. One of them might come up with 80 horsepower. The other one might come up with 85. You never know. But that's kind of what they're trying to emulate. But this is more my favorite way to browse through used cars. Is just looking at this and letting them load in. And just see kind of what I want. Like this is a really slow Type R. Oh, this is an Integra. That's why. Got it. But yeah, no, there's a bunch of really cool cars in this game. And I'm really excited for what the future of this game holds. I'm going to make some more detail-oriented videos as well, like on specific areas. But for right now, I think we're good. I'll talk to you guys later. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. This is a nice overview of Auto Legends for anybody who hasn't had the chance to play it yet and hasn't gotten a player code. I'll talk to you guys later. Peace out.